I am Anthony from Hatchlinger.net, and today we're going to look at my Playmates Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles collection that began in 1988. Before we go there, I'm going to quickly cover my earlier action figures. Keep in mind that I let my youngest brother play with them starting at when he was four years old, so their condition is not the best. In 1982, I received a Mattel's Masters of the Universe Skeletor with five points of articulation. Skeletor came with a horse that had guns mounted on it and a bird at that attached to his arm so he could fly, as well as a three-wheeled bike that rolled using a gear system and a whip. I never received any other toys in that toy line. In 1984, I received the World Event Toys Voltron Blue line with six points of articulation. However, I never received any of the other parts to form Voltron or any other toys in the series. I would have loved to get the four lines that I'm missing, but over 30 years later, I doubt there's very many uh, of good quality remaining. I would love to be able to form the head, but, you know, nope. In 1985, received a LG and Thundercats Lionel with five points of articulation. Lionel had this feature where his eyes lit up if you put the uh, ring thing here into his back. He also has this chopping action that with a sword in his hand looks really cool. Um, I, I should mention I was eight years old when I got this toy, so the fact is pushing a button to make um, his arm move was cool, like chop chop. I never received any other toys in the series. In 1985, I received the Mask Rhino semi-truck and a motorcycle that turned into a helicopter. I never received any other toys in the series. In 1987, I received Hasbro, Transformers, Throttlebots, Goldbug, Freeway, Chase, and Searchlight. For my birthday and during the holidays later that year, I ended up receiving the Technobot Scattershot and Seacon Snaptrap. You can watch the Transformers How to Transform videos on this channel to check all of the Transformers out. In 1988, a visit to a local department store would be life-changing. Red was my favorite color and Raphael was in stock. With seven points of articulation, size, and a bunch of other accessories, it was the most action-y action figure that could, I had ever seen. A later visit would then add Michelangelo as my second toy, then Shredder as my third. Aside here, I don't know who created Shredder's legs, but I've never been able to get him to stand up. Like, one leg is shorter than the other. This is nuts. Comment if you've ever gotten this uh, Shredder to stand up on his own, without any type of props. Anyway, I missed out on four figures that I really wanted. There was Mona Lisa, Slash, General Shrag, and Rat King. So I kind of still look for them occasionally. Maybe they'll pop up on a market in decent condition. But uh, these were my first originals. And then, of course, I love Raphael so much, so I got his Evolutions one, which transforms into a you know standing figure. And... Um, this, this was kind of a throwback for me. I actually have the original Donatello version, but uh, having a backpack on Raphael, I never had the opportunity, so I figured, what the heck. So I just, I hate his general look, but I like the concept, which is, uh, you know, that. But uh, to go into this guy, uh, oh, see if I can get him open. I'm trying to remember if there's anything else I had to do. Like, oh, there we go. So... Uh, I love Transformers. I love Ninja Turtles. Getting this guy was like a, a combination of both in one and uh, isn't really hard to transform. I haven't transformed this guy in something around 20 years. But he isn't too difficult. And then if I remember correctly, oh, these always fell off. I don't Kind of clip back in there. This guy had a little bit more articulation than the regular figures. Still the shoulders, the wrist, uh, the head, but then it had this foot thing, which I, I guess it was so it would be easier to fold up. 
But I mean, he is obviously much larger than the original Raphael. And uh, technically taller than the newer one. So, he wins? Anyway, uh, as you can see, he uh, is generally a bigger guy. Obviously, he has to be to fit in his shell. And his weapons, he of course had size, but the size even transformed. So, the size did this weird, like, long pitchforky thing. If I can get him to do it. I, I prefer them looking like size. Get it in there. Uh, there we go. But, uh... The other thing that really got me was every toy would come with one of these things, which I guess is a weapons rack. And, um, they typically come with, like, a, looks like a pizza cutter and a couple of stars and, um, like, some type of hooky thing. And, um, I, I kept, like, a number of these things I guess because I mean they do stand up and they have little holes to hold basically just the stars um, I wish they could have done more with them Maybe each of the weapons that came with it had little holes so they can be mounted on here so you can like have a nice little closet as it were for these guys but no such luck up next was Bebop, Rocksteady and a foot soldier but um, I never I was able to get the foot soldier to stand either I I really question the reasoning behind the way the stances where the foot soldier and shredder existed. I, I just, uh, anyway, I ended up getting the newer origami foot soldier, uh, mainly because I wanted a foot soldier that could stand up. And uh, he kind of, he is so thin, it's really hard to keep him up too. So at this point, he just looks like he's helping the older foot soldier up. It's like uh, he has fallen and he can't get up. Um, and, uh, the origami foot soldier is life alert. Up next was Casey Jones and Baxter Stockman. I needed, well, first I needed more bad guys because I also wanted my good guys to kind of equal out. And plus, I felt like Raphael needed a bestie. Michelangelo is his brother. He's not the same as a best friend. At least, I don't think so. But then I, I, I kind of liked what Baxter Stockman had. He could fly. But I was like, well, wait a minute. I need a good guy that can fly. So, I, and I don't remember Ace Stuck being in the cartoon. But I figured, what the heck? So I grabbed him. My my only problem with him is, first off, it's a pain in the butt to balance him. Uh, but uh, I mean, Baxter's legs are just you know, his feet are bigger, so it's easier to balance him. Uh, before I set this up, it took me seven minutes to get him to stand up. Okay, that's how difficult it is to get him to a position you can counterbalance his wings. Uh, Casey, I was like, after paying seven minutes on him I was like I'm not going to try to counterbalance that bag Casey's feet are decent enough but no but after I saw the movie I thought Casey Jones was super cool and um, that that moment I saw him I had to have him boy that sounded bad next up we have Leatherhead a Triceraton and Mondo Gecko now I I remember Leatherhead in the cartoon I have no idea where the Triceraton comes from I don't remember when I first saw the Triceraton, I feel like it was during the 2003 series. But, um, and then of course Mondo Gecko, I kind of remember him in the uh, original series. I think he was like a one episode kind of like Michelangelo type. I figured, well, what the heck, I like dinosaurs, so, you know, fill that gap. Leatherhead looked cool in the cartoon, and Mondo Gecko, hey, somebody from Michelangelo to play with. I ended up getting Scumbag at some point just because he was in the story and he looked kind of gross. But then I remember there was an episode of the original series where uh, the foot create ground chuck and dirt bag. And they just don't like being led. So they, of course, t team up and go off on their own adventure. And I believe it was only in an episode. But um, I, I thought they looked cool. Um, obviously, one's a bull and the other is some type of uh, mole. Although, uh, he looks more like a rat to me with small ears, but go figure, I just, they look cool to me. And, uh, they add it to my bad guy arsenal, because I started to get kind of heavy into the good guys. Chrome Dome got an episode in the series, and I thought it looked cool. It was basically a metal shredder, somebody who could combat Metalhead. So I figured, what the heck. But then we had Walkabout, which is just basically, uh, 
a reason why to bring somebody from the other side of the planet into the show. Um, so what the heck? He also looks pretty freaking cool. Now, Ray Filet, um, he has a story. Now, right now, he is actually the most recent uh, turtle character that I own. Uh, behind him is April O'Neil. Uh, but um, so the story is, is 1990. We're vacationing in Florida. And I had $10 to spend during the spring break. Because this is we went during spring break in 1990. So we're in Tampa. There's a Toys R Us. We go in. I cannot remember why we're at the Toys R Us. I think we were getting something from my little brother who was about a year old. So maybe formula or diapers. And uh, there was Ray. $4 plus tax. I didn't have him. I wanted him. But my mom and my uncle kept telling me, well, if you spend this money, that is that is $4.25 less you're going to have in case you find something else you may want better. So I stewed on it for like 15 minutes while they were buying my brother's supplies, and I passed on it. I regretted it. I regretted it for years. So I uh, recently, just out of some fluke, found him on eBay sealed still uh, for like 10 bucks. And um, this is not the same one that I saw in the store. This guy has this um, weird thing where you touch him and he changes color. Uh, I'm okay with it. Uh, I don't think the original one had this, so I think this is like the second version of him. But um, I finally got Ray Filet, and I think he looks freaking cool. Uh, so I've had him for about two or three years now. And, and I finally feel like I've accomplished something. For the longest time, because uh, there's a number of siblings... Um, I'm the oldest of nine, and uh, the brother right below me in age, he also collected Ninja Turtles. So what I would avoid doing is buying any that he had so he wouldn't mix anything up. So eventually he stopped collecting Ninja Turtles. He had switched to comic books or something, I don't remember. Anyway, so his first Ninja Turtle was Donatello, his second being Leonardo, and then he got Splinter when I got Shredder. So at some point... They started re-releasing toys. So this is a re-released uh, Splinter. Now the one thing I dislike that the older versions had is they had pupils. He has no pupils. The, even changed the picture. No pupils. Just a little black dot. I guess I could apply paint if I really wanted it bad enough. But um, that that's how I tell which one's mine. <laughs> um, Donatello, it's kind of funny that his belt is purple. But uh, the other thing was that really got me interested in him was that... If I can get it open, his back is hollow, and I keep two stars in there. But of course, he has the bow staff and everything else. Uh, you can you can see the list down there. And um, I, I just thought he was cool and different. And I'm never going to get him to stand up again. Mutagen Man, uh, he came with a jar of ooze that you put in here. Uh, he leaked almost immediately. I um, I keep him dry now. It, it's just uh, it's not worth the mess. Uh, one time I came back, found him in my box, just um, dripping open, and everything was covered. So now everything has this, like, really sticky feel to it because of that. It's because of that um, green slime they used to give away for free. Uh, with pretty much any time you'd buy anything, it's very weird. Uh, here it shows, like, water going in there, but it didn't. It wasn't water. It's a lot. Muckman and Joe Eyeball were in an episode of the cartoon... And then after the, I think the third Ninja Turtles movie, they start doing this samurai thing. And um, as I was trying not to get toys that looked exactly like those of my brothers, I ended up grabbing Samurai Leo, which uh, he looks kind of cool. And then, of course, well, my brother had Yoshagi Ujimbo, so I grabbed Panda Khan. Contrary to their order, April O'Neil was actually the second most recent figure I bought, uh, Ray Flay being the newest. April, I found her at a local hobby shop about two years ago. I paid a pretty penny for her. And uh, apparently she was some type of Toys R Us overflow. Which is weird. Because this figure is quite old. But probably why I paid so much. The one thing that bothers me about her is she doesn't have the form articulation that the other figures have. She only changes at her head and her shoulders and her legs. And none of the wrist movement... So, uh, and, and then she's a little, she's thinner, so she's, she, you worry about breaking her. It bothers me a little bit. Now, you see Leonardo kind of standing there. Leonardo, I, I don't know where his box is. I usually keep all the blisters, but he had this cool feature, which, again, made him different from what my little brother had. 
And I, I just love that. Of course, he still has the belt with the sword. He has all the weapons and stuff. He just had that feature that I thought was spectacular. So then we have a metalhead. Uh, my brother had the original uh, green, grayish, and yellow version, uh, the one from the cartoon. I figured that this, this all metal one was just a whole lot cooler looking. He comes with the same equipment. He just uh, has this nice color. Then, of course, um, the movie was Super Shredder. I, I saw him and Krang, and I was like, okay, I have to get these guys. He is just buff. He is freaking fantastic. I love him. Uh, I feel like I can hurt myself on his spikes. Uh, it is just great. And then Krang is from, the, of course, the cartoon. And the one thing I really love is that uh, you can open up the little piece here, and Krang can insult you and call you a moron. So I, I really enjoyed that, and if and it completed my bad guy collection as far as I was concerned. I mean, short of General Treg and Red King and Slash, but all of, you know the big bads are always in the cartoon. Uh, I really I was like, yes, this is awesome. I kind of wish they released a giant version of him. And finally, we have the twice sets. They have seen better days. I I mean, I have this motorbike. It, it rolls backwards, and, and you know do this and it, it does this thing uh, of course there's buzz off here who uh, carries somebody in his back uh, just a giant wasp I guess or maybe a bee I don't know and then we had this uh, turtle pulled and then we have this plunger cannon and um, it is it is I actually have a couple of these because um, I thought it would look cool but yeah of course uh, this gimmick where you put the slime in here you open up this valve and you slime whoever's below and then, of course, this guy, if you put something below it, when it worked, the claws would grab it and allow you to reel it up. Because, uh, you know, this is basically just a fishing line. Uh, yeah, yeah. So those are the, the toys that I had for Ninja Turtles, more or less. In the 1990s, I still occasionally collected Turtles and Transformers, but because I was a teenager with a brother that was nearly a dozen years younger, I helped him build his Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and Dragon Ball collections. Now I collect what I missed out on the first time with Turtles and Transformers. Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching this video. We would also like to thank our contributors and patrons for supporting this video. If you wish to add to the discussion, post a comment below. Please remember to like, subscribe, and check out our other videos. Thank you for checking out our content. Before you leave, please remember to click like and then subscribe. If you want to receive notifications, do not forget to enable them by clicking on the bell. Then afterwards, check out our social media at Hasledge.net and our website at hasledge.net.